evening ladies and gentlemen this is Handog Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon and I came across this article um, that EU citizens face mass poverty and to think that this is the first world country is absolutely staggering that uh, EU citizens would be facing uh, such a dire situation and this is not just the EU this goes across into the UK and is spreading across the world. Uh, many African countries are going to see real food shortages this winter and many of their governments will not be able to afford to buy the food that they need to keep their citizens fed. Uh, they're talking about everything from rolling blackouts in France, uh, which means that all of your uh, phones and so on and so forth will be down. You know, you remember all of these cell towers that look um, all nice and cute standing there in the middle of nowhere. They all have their own hydro supply. And what is that going to do to phone bills? There, there are so many things that this reaches its fingers into that we all have to deal with on a daily basis. You know, and the knock-on effects are going to be unbelievable. We're, we're now seeing um, smelters shutting down. Uh, Europe's, uh, Germany's uh, second largest steel maker is shutting down one of its furnaces. Uh, the fertilizer plants are shutting down because the in energy cost to produce the fertilizer uh, is just way beyond what they can charge or possibly get on the open market. So you can imagine next year is going to be incredibly difficult for farmers. Holland. Okay, Holland, is their farming is in a state of disarray now. They provide 34% of the world's produce is exported from little old Holland. What are they going to do when they can't get the fertilizers if the farmers ever recover from the situation which is occurring right now over the nitrogen issue? We're doing the same in Canada, uh, picking up people for nitrogen. So these shortages are going to really start kicking in the smelters. If you don't have a cutting edge, if you cannot manufacture steel, you essentially don't have a civilization. What about all the wire products? All about all the things that it's made out of aluminum? There's already been aluminum shortages with all of the aluminum that we use. Uh, I mean, sometimes I, I get staggered when I look around, you know, um, I happen to have aluminum rims on my vehicle that came with the vehicle and you feel the weight of them. These are actually pretty heavy pieces of aluminum or quite a lot of aluminum there. And when you think of all of the cars with aluminum rims, how much aluminum is that? So where are we going to get all this stuff from? Why is nobody, this is a major news story and nobody is talking about it. All of these knock-on effects will affect us in North America and so on and so forth. Anyway, I have a little montage of articles here uh, I'd like to show you and um, we'll come back. I'll do a quick wrap-up. Okie dokie, here we go. And this from RT. EU citizens face mass poverty. Expert, households will fall behind on their energy bills, analyst warns. Rising energy prices could lead to mass impoverishment in the EU, a professor at the University of Liège in Belgium told French news site Atlantico on Monday. Damien Ernst warned there is no indication that the situation will improve after this winter. EU households will fall behind on their energy bills, Professor Damien Ernst says. According to him, the perfect storm that has formed in energy markets is expected to have major economic impact on households and businesses. Ernst suggested that in Belgium, households on average will be paying €10,000 or $10,000 a year for power and heating. The energy crisis will be far worse than the 2008 financial crisis and the oil shocks of the 1970s, he said, adding this will have economic consequences, especially for purchasing power and lead to financial constraints. With such a jump in energy prices, it will be impossible to control inflation, Ernst warned. Power prices in Europe have continued to reach record highs, intensifying the region's energy crisis and stoking fears about access to electricity and heating as the weather begins to cool. Nearly one in four adults plan never to turn their heating on this winter, polling suggests, as average energy bills are set to surge while the temperature drops over the coming months. 
A survey of more than 2,000 UK adults found 23% would not turn their heating on at all over the winter months, with this figure rising to 27% among parents with children under 18. In the poll, which was carried out by Savanta Comres before the new price cap was announced, 69% of respondents said they would switch their heating on less, and 1 in 10 said they would take out a loan. It comes amid resounding warnings that people are in for a dire winter, with the energy price cap set to rise by 80% by October, pushing the average household's yearly bill up from £1,971 to £3,549. And in Shetland, as many as 96% of people could be pushed into fuel poverty by next year, the local authority has warned. OK, so this from oilprice.com. Aluminum smelters shutter operations in Europe as power prices soar. And this is August 22nd, 2022. Second round effects from Europe's astronomical power price increases are coming in hot and heavy, with both French and German one year ahead of baseload electricity prices hitting levels which mean only a handful of Europeans will be able to afford power in one year and the rest will soon be short a kidney. And here we see German French electricity prices one year forward going up like a rocket. Europe's energy crisis has claimed another victim in the power-hungry metals industry after Norsk Hydro said it planned to shutter an aluminum smelter in Slovakia at the end of the month, Bloomberg reports. With aluminum one of the most energy-intensive metals to produce, the closure of the Slovakia facility adds to growing signs of stress in Europe's industrial economy as power prices surge to record highs. It's why Hydro and others are now moving to shut down plants entirely. The region has already lost about half of its sink at aluminum smelting capacity during the last year, mainly as producers dialed back output. Hydro, Slovakia's majority owner, said the closure was a response to adverse conditions including high electricity prices which show no signs of improvement in the short term. The smelter was running at 60% of its 175,000 tonne annual capacity and would suffer substantial losses if it continued operations beyond 2022, the Norwegian firm said. On Tuesday, Hydro said production at another aluminum plant in Norway would be impacted by a strike starting August 22nd, adding to the strain on supplies. The news came one day after zinc prices jumped after one of Europe's largest zinc smelters said it too would halt production next month as the continent's energy crisis threatens to hobble heavy industries. And the other thing about these smelters, when you turn off those furnaces, it takes months to bring those back online again, to get those back up to temperature. If there's no damage done in the cooling process, those furnaces are never allowed to go out. So that's another down the road problem. This, this stuff is not coming online anytime soon. Once it's gone offline, yeah, it's going to be a while. So I think you can see that the um, situation is ripe for unrest as people become cold and hungry. All of those people who were just about making it have now fallen under the wheels of the bus and they have ceased to be a neutral player. They have now become a liability to society. Okay, um, If you're keeping your head above water, you're an asset. But how many people does it take to become a liability to society before the whole society falls apart? And that is a situation here. How many people just give up because it's not possible? It is not possible to pay five times on your energy bill. Can you imagine? Can you imagine at home right now in North America, even though we're not quite feeling the same effects they are in Europe? Imagine your hydro bill and your fuel costs for this winter went up by five times and possibly more than that in the middle of winter. Your discretionary spending would come to a complete standstill. No more eating out, no more restaurants, done. You're buying essentials only. What about the kids who are going to hear no for the first time? I, I cannot imagine what the world is going to look like in the spring. 
uh, if all of this happens unless there is some radical change some magic spell is cast almost you need right now to stave off this situation um, these the consequences are going to be absolutely dire um, they will be harrowing is a word we haven't heard uh, in a long time but it will be harrowing for an awful lot of people so please uh, conduct yourself accordingly make any preparations that you can buy any energy that you need right now buy it before you need it because prices will be affected by this I don't know how much in North America but if there is a huge pressure in that market and we all buy from the same market we're all and this is what's what happens when you have a just-in-time system and a completely interconnected world what what happens anywhere in the world affects everybody else just about now so like I say prepare yourself accordingly put your flak jacket on and get ready get ready for winter okay if you've enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe below and in the meantime this is Hamlock Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon we'll talk very very shortly see you now take care bye